अरे सुनो चश्मा देखा क्या मेरा आपके सर पर है रे ओ सो क्रेंजी इज इन डेट मैं हाउ डज दट एवर हैपन एनी मोर Or did it used to happen where you use your spec on your head and on your nose or anywhere and just forget your specs? Keep it somewhere. I understand, but on your head, it has never happened to me. Has it ever happened to you or anywhere around you? And that's the reason why we are not starting this video with that PJ. Nope, not at all. But this video, hold on, is about these beautiful, amazing things. These things have become so damn common among our friends, colleagues, relatives, you know, anyone around us today. that the efforts the significance of these amazing specs are going underappreciated or underestimated just to give you perspective the moment i took the spectacles out i was not able to see the world around me clearly the camera was a bit blurred as well and more about that there are 7.8 billion people in this world out of which 4 billion people are affected with blurred vision and these amazing things give their vision give their life a bit more clarity and helps them to see with a bit more color and that's the significance people of those spectacles on every one of your eyes and today we are going to understand from a to z how do these spectacles work excited let's go people let's get on with it but before that make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to this channel right now for amazing videos like this and i'm pretty sure you're going to love this video so make sure that you share this video as well and let me know in the comment section which is your favorite part and did you love how the spectacles work or not let's make it very simple let's divide this entire topic into basically three stages the first stage of course what is our spectacles correcting hey matlab what is it talking about is it it is correcting our eyes isn't it so let's talk about our eye why do we have to use the spectacles and number 2 let's talk about what these spectacles are matlab how do they work and what are they made up of and everything number 3 let's try to find out how is the eye and the spectacle friends what makes them go together and what makes the spectacles make us see better when the eyes are affected so we're going to talk about these three stages so let's start with the first stage what is it correcting what are the defects of the human eye that the spectacles are correcting so to understand that we need to go forward and talk about a bit of the parts and function of the human eye majorly talking about the lens and the retina now what does the lens and the retina do now you can think it as as a projector screen and a projector in the movie theaters you have seen there there is a projector and the projector projects out the light and it is produced on a screen the theater screen isn't it it's exactly like that the lens is projecting the light or i should say focusing the light on the uh, screen which is the retina so retina is nothing but a screen which has all the sensors and all the receptors that you know uh, receive signals of the light the color of the light the uh, warmness of the light uh, the brightness of the light and everything but again that's a different topic and you can find out more about this on our vedantus class 9th and 10th channel so it's a, like a projector screen a projector and a projector screen so the a uh, lens focuses the light on the retina and that's when we are able to see things clearly but sometimes due to few defects on the muscles that hold the lenses or the retina itself or the lens itself there is entirely a possibility that the light from the lens might not be focused on the retina it sometimes get focused before the retina convert the light rays converges before the retina and this is the defect which we call very very famously as myopia or near sightedness in this scenario people are able to see the things clearly nearby but far away things are not that clear and trust me people when i say this this defect has affected 3 billion people in the world right now that is close to half the population of the world that's how common this is right now isn't it now sometimes it's entirely possible that this the light rays which are converging are not converging before the retina not on the retina but after the retina and this is the kind of defect which we call it as hypermetropia or far sightedness in which we can see the far away objects very clearly but we cannot see the objects nearby that clearly and this again statistics has affected close to 1 billion people in the entire world yes So these are the two major defects when we talk about the human eye, the myopia, and the hypermetropia. Now let's get on to the stage two and talk about what are spectacles and what are they made up of. 
Okay, now on to the second stage, let's talk about what are spectacles. Now these spectacles are nothing but merely lenses. I'm pretty sure you must have seen the lenses on your camera, on your mobile phone, everywhere. So these are nothing but lenses. Now what is a lens? A lens is nothing but uh, something which is transparent, something which is made up of glass, but it has at least one spherical surface. That means at least one side of the lens is curved or one side of the glass is curved that can be termed as a lens. More about it, you can learn again on Vedantu class 9th and 10th channel. But right now, let's talk about what does the lens do. The purpose of a lens is to refract the light. What is refraction? This we have studied in how are rainbows curved while a concept as well. But in put it in very simple terms, refraction is the process of light. When it passes through from one medium to another medium, it bends. The light rays bend when they pass from one medium to another medium. That is called the concept of refraction. So what does a lens do is it refracts the light. It bends the light when the light passes through it. Okay, got the idea? Now, based on this fact, there are two lenses. One is a convex lens and the other is a concave lens. What does the convex lens do? When the light passes through the convex lens, this lens converts the light, that is focuses the light onto a point. And that's why these lenses, which are also called as convex lenses, are called as converging lenses because they converge the light. Similarly, when I talk about the uh, next lenses, they are called as concave lenses. Now these concave lenses, when the light falls on them, instead of converging the light, they diverge the light. All the light rays get diverged out. And these kind of lenses are called as diverging lenses. So convex lenses, converging lenses, and concave lenses, diverging lenses. Now, which of these lenses are used in your spectacles? The answer to that is both of them. Absolutely, yes. Now, we're going to use each of these lenses in the concept of myopia and hypermetropia both and try to understand whether which lens should be used for myopia and which lens should be used for hypermetropia. And also, we're going to do a lot more questions, something like, can our eyes be affected with both myopia and hypermetropia? Hold on for it. But before that, if you want to join us for super fun sessions like that and gain 100% knowledge and score 100% of marks along with unlimited live classes with super fun and high level quizzes and while you're playing the quizzes, you're actually competing with the students throughout the world. You also have the option of having interactive replays with live quizzes and leaderboards along with premium downloadable content with handwritten notes of the master teachers and in-class doubt solving with quality tests and assignments after every session and every chapter plus free 5000 plus micro courses and free crash courses for competitive examinations with a guarantee that more the classes you take less of the price you would have to pay for this and more of these you just have to go on to the link in the descriptions below for, of this video click on the link and the site would open just go and choose your grade and choose your board go through the website which is beautifully laid out clearing all your doubts and the offers click on the get subscription button Choose your uh, amount of months you want to get enrolled in. Click on the enter coupon code and write down the coupon code spectrum and avail all the benefits this coupon code has to offer for all the kinds of months and just click on proceed to pay. That's it. Now let's get back. Amazing, 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 isn't it? The eyes are beautiful eyes, have an amazing concept. The lenses have an amazing concept. Now let's try to combine both of them, shall we? Okay, so let's first talk about myopia. In myopia, what happens? In myopia, the light rays from the lenses converge before the retina itself, right? Before the retina itself, the light rays converge. Now what we have to do to see things clearly, we have to make the light rays converge on the retina instead of before that. Hmm. So I have two lenses with me, convex and concave. A convex lens is a converging lens. So if I keep a le convex lens in front of my eye, in front of my actual lens, which I have in my eyes, convex lens is converging already. And then, so when the light ray will pass through the convex lens, it will converge the light. And then it will pass through the human eye lens, which will even more converge. So the light rays might converge even before the <laughs> ahead converging point. So that means convex lens is making things worse, isn't it? So now let us kick out this convex lens and put the concave lens there. Now if I'm trying to pass the light ray through a concave lens, concave lens is a diverging lens. So what is happening? The concave lens diverges the light ray outward. And now when it falls on my human eye, and then when it is, con when it is converging, it, it is converging onto exactly the retina. So that extra divergence which the concave lens gave us helps us a lot. And that's how myopia is corrected, or that's how nearsightedness is corrected. 
Now, similarly, the exact same process goes on to hypermetropia also. In the case of hypermetropia, the light rays are converging behind the retina. So I hope you understand the concept that I cannot use a diverging lens here because then it will get converged even after that, isn't it? So that's why I use a convex lens here because it's a converging lens and we need to make the convergence even ahead. That's what you want to do. So the light rays passing the convex lens converges a bit, then it passes to the human eye lens, it also converges and then it exactly forms on the retina. And that's how beautifully the artificial lens meets the natural lens in our eye and gets combined together with so much of love and harmony. Fantastic. Now for all the people who are wondering already, Sir, what type of lens is in our human eye? Is it a convex lens or a concave lens? To be honest people, you must have already understood the light rays is getting converged onto the retina, focused onto the retina. So human eye naturally has a convex lens, but more beautifully, a convex lens which is flexible. It is not made up of glass, of course. It is made up of fiber and it is so damn flexible that it can change its shape. And that's what gives us a lot more amazing things such as focusing wherever you want, whenever you want it. For example, you can do this small activity with me very quickly. You can take your hand up, look onto your hand. And when you're looking onto your hand, everything behind you is blurred. And now if you look behind, you can see the things behind you very clear, but the front your hand is some completely blurred. So this bokeh effect created by our eyes, which is naturally there, not through any artificial software, is done because our lenses inside our eye can change their curvatures. That's how amazing our human eye is. But more about that maybe in an, an another video. But let's talk about something much more crucial. Can our eyes have both myopia and hypometropia? together what do you think what do you think is it possible think about it can our eyes get defected by myopia hypermetropia together myopia is converging the light is before the retina Con in, in the case of hypermetropia the light is getting converged after the retina can both of them happen at the same time of course, your lens is not capable of converging the light ray ahead and behind the retina at the same time simultaneously. That's not possible. That's, that's literally not possible. Can you go towards the right and go towards the left at the same time? You cannot do that. And that's how lens cannot also do the same thing. But so the same eye, that means let me talk, let me talk about my, this left eye here. This, this right eye, sorry, yeah. this is the right eye here. So this right eye cannot have myopia and hypermetropia together. Not possible. But can my left eye have myopia and my right eye have hypermetropia? The answer is yes, it can have it. One of your eyes can be affected with myopia and one of the eyes can be affected with hypermetropia. It's pretty rare. Could be possible if you're really unlucky. Hmm. Think about it now. Are you unlucky? <laughs> okay, okay. So let's talk about one more amazing thing one more kind of defect which you might have heard of and that is uh, sir when i look at my grandparents you tell me that myopia and presbyopia is not possible together that means you, your your vision cannot be blurred for far away things and nearby things both but if i look at my grandparents or some of my you know uncles and aunties who are just aged a bit they are not able to see far away objects or nearby objects clearly at all so what is this defect then People, this defect is called as presbyopia. Now, what is this presbyopia? It's, it's also known as old age hypermetropia. Now, if you take human eye, as I told you already, the lenses are held by muscles, right? The lenses are held by muscles. What they do is they, you know, press the lenses and they expand the lenses so that you have your focuses. Uh, so, so what happens is that when, when they extend the lenses, when they, when they expand the lenses, you are able to see the faraway things very clearly. The focus is for the faraway objects. And when they actually, uh, you know, compress the lenses, your focus reduces down to nearby objects. Now, these muscles due to old age, what happens is they lose this ability. Because when you become old, every one of your muscles becomes weak, becomes loose and everything, isn't it? So what happens is the lenses lose the ability to expand or contract or expand or contract. They just stay there itself. They get tired. And due to which the eye becomes incapable of focusing on far away objects and nearby objects together. And that is the condition which we call it as presbyopia. Now the question is, how do you correct that? 
The answer to that question is, now this is sort of a combination of myopia and hypermetropia. You use concave lens for myopia and convex lens for hypermetropia. So let's combine the lenses also and that's what happens. You combine the concave and convex lenses together and that's what that's when we call it as a bifocal lens. You have seen many 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 spectacles like this out there where at, where at the you know up down there is a bulge and at the top it's normal and that's called as a bifocal lens. Now the upper part of this lens is actually made up of a concave lens because whenever you're seeing far away your eyes are up. You never see things far away by looking down. No, you never do that. You always look up when you're seeing things far away. So the upper part of the lens is made up of concave lens so that the myopia is corrected. You can see far away things. And whenever you need to see things closely or read anything closely, your eyes always go down. So the lower part of the lens is made up of a convex lens. So the, you can see the things nearby and hypermetropia is corrected as well. How beautifully and advanced we have become when it comes down to spectacles people. How beautiful it is, isn't it? You never knew that these many technologies go into spectacles. So, well, this is how spectacles work with beautifully your eyes. So lenses, 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 lenses everywhere. The spectacles, lenses, the camera through which you're seeing me, lenses, the camera uh, through which you see yourself, lenses, selfie camera, main camera, any sort of DSLR camera, every computer camera, laptop camera, so, you know, CCTV camera, you are surrounded by cameras and lenses out there. That is a concern for a lot of you guys. Isn't it? The more we realize how important spectacles are, this all comes down to a very interesting question. We are surrounded by cameras. Are your cameras always on? Think about it. Mobile phone cameras especially, are they always on? Because it's just a software that opens up to show you that the camera is there. But otherwise, how do you turn off a hardware? How do you turn off a lens? How do you do that? So, are your cameras always on? Kabhi socha hai? Socha nahi to socha bhi. That's all for today's video people. I hope you always enjoyed today's video and that last question which I told you have made you think and that is for the next episode of how do. How do the mobile phone cameras work and how do we know that the cameras around us are always on or off. We'll talk about that in the next video and make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel right now so that you get notified about that video when it comes out along with all the amazing videos which are out there already on this particular channel. Especially, let me recommend you guys to watch the ARC series which we have launched recently. Parents, one video has been already gone. Exam pressure video has already gone. Both of them have been fabulously hit. They are the motivational videos out there. Also, I would like to recommend all the time in the session I've been talking about, you know, go and try to visit Vedantus class 9th and channel because there you will find out all the amazing things related to your board examinations of 10th and also amazing concepts from 9th standard which comes in your school, school, school top of topics. Great. So I really hope all of you enjoyed today's video. If in case you did, as I said, make sure that you leave a like, mention in the comments which was your favorite part for today and how amazingly you enjoyed this particular video. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys in the next session, people. Until then, this is Abhishek signing off. Enjoy your life. Stay home, stay safe and stay strong. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.